Hey guys, Nurse Alyssa here. Today we're going to be talking about Coban 2 compression therapy. But before we get started, if you could hit a like and subscribe, it would be greatly appreciated. So Coban 2 is a single use um, only product, so you can only use it one time. Um, it's latex free and it's a double layer of inelastic short stretch system. It does provide a high compression of 30 to 40. Um, millimeters of mercury um, for up to seven days. So the compression does last up to seven days. So we're going to use the Cobian 2 system uh, for clients with an ABI of greater than uh, 0 0.8 um, who need a high compression therapy. So this is for venous insufficiency with or without ulcers, arterial and venous insufficiency with or without ulcers, lymphedema, and generalized lower leg edema. So I did add a chart here, um, just in case you want to see the ABPI numbers and what you should actually be using. Um, Cause here, this is uh, from Coband and it does show um, when you shouldn't be using it and um, whether you're using the two layer light um, or just the normal compression. Um, Cause there, there is a difference between Coband 2 and Coband 2 light. Um, so that'll be in a, the Coban 2 light, it's very similar, um, but it'll be in a different video. Um, yep, so you can look at this if you would like to stop it, you can. Okay, so um, like anything in healthcare, we have precautions here, and these are very important, um, especially with compression therapy. We need to make sure before we apply any compression to anyone, an ABPI is done to ensure that they can tolerate compression. Um, so it needs to be approved by a physician, a nurse practitioner, or a wound care specialist. Um, for very thin legs um, that are very bony, you want to make sure that you're padding them extra um, so it doesn't, the pressure um, doesn't cause damage. Um, and then if you notice that the client has any pain, um, pale limbs, cool toes, um, signs and symptoms of heart failure, you need to remove the wrap and get a hold of the doctor or nurse practitioner or wound care uh, clinician right away. Um, so we are not going to apply compression if somebody has uncontrollable heart failure. And we're never going to put compression on someone who has a lower limb uh, infection. So if somebody has a wound on their leg and it is infected, we are not going to put on compression um, until that is under control. Um, as long as they're treating the infection, you can put on the compression. So just like any other compression system, you are going to want to wrap the, uh, the legs in the early morning just because that's when they are at their smallest um, because after laying down all night, your legs do shrink. So you want to apply it in the morning. So you're first going to want to wash the legs or shower. Um, put on moisturizer to make sure that the legs um, are nice and hydrated. Um, it just prevents skin tears and other skin issues. Um, and then you're going to let the legs completely dry before wrapping them. If there is any wounds, the wounds would have to be wrapped first. Now, when you go to wrap the leg, you wanna make sure, and I feel like this is one of the most important steps here, is making sure that the foot is in a dorsiflex position. So as you can see right here, um, the foot is um, pulled up, but the calf muscle is at rest. Um, so you wanna make sure that you have that dorsiflexion. Um, this allows the patient to be able to walk comfortably. And um, so then that there's no um, leg wearing right right at the crease where they would walk because um, that can cause a wound. So the first step of um, this compression system is the comfort 
foam layer. So the foam, it has two sides to it. It has a white side and a brown side. So the white foam goes against the leg. Um, so it does go on with minimal overlap. This is just a comfort layer um, so that the compression doesn't push on the skin. Um, this just is kind of like a sponge against the skin so it feels good. Um, so remember that we're going to have it in a 90 degree dorsiflex position and you're going to start at the baby toe and you're going to start wrapping it around and like I said minimal overlap of this. Um, it doesn't have to have the 50% overlap like the compression does. This is just the comfort layer. Um, so just uh, uh, to note here right around the back of the heel you are not going to cover the heel completely um, you're going to go around the back and kind of where your foot meets like where the ground would be you, you'll go behind the ankle there but you don't go directly underneath the, the heel with the foam um, so then you'll just wrap it up the leg and once you get to the top you're going to cut off any excess material so this should be um, go up to a point of two fingers behind the knee so you put two fingers behind the knee and that's exactly where you need to stop with uh, with this layer um, and then just press lightly on it and um, so the foam will kind of stick together and then you can start wrapping with uh, the next wrap so now for the compression layer. So the compression layer is applied at full stretch. Um, so the system, everything is full stretch. So you're going to want to keep the roll nice and close to the limb to keep that uh, full stretch going through throughout the entire leg. Um, so you're going to start in the exact same spot right at the, the little toe here and you're going to go around and this layer you overlap by 50%. So um, every layer you go, um, you go 50% over the last layer you just did. Uh, around the ankle, you're going to uh, do a couple uh, figure eights just to make sure that the heel is fully covered and enclosed. And then you will go up the leg, um, kind of continue until you get to that um, two fingers behind the knee um, once again and then you will stop and you will cut off any excess. Um, you can just put some tape on it um, and tape it so it does stay in place right at the end there. Um, and then to remove this, because uh, we do have the little removal uh, tab here, it's just you're just cutting it off. So the frequency change of uh, this compression system, it can last up to seven days given um, that it doesn't start slipping um, and if there's any wounds that the exudate is managed well because we don't want it seeping through uh, the compression system. So as long as the exudate is managed well, it can last up to seven days, uh, but sometimes while patients are sleeping, um, it, can, it can start slipping or um, kind of get crinkled up and then it would need to be changed. Um, the expected outcome of the Coban 2 is that the patient's legs are going to start getting smaller, so the edema is um, more controlled and um, the, the system is doing what it's supposed to be doing, um, decreasing the edema. So you should be able to notice within one week's time um, a measurable improvement. So that's all I have for this video. I'll catch you next time.